Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. So Jund, Jund mid range, or we got green red with a small black splash here, basically. I like the idea of the black cards in this deck. Um, I think one of the things that Grill can struggle with on occasion is uh, being able to kill some of the more expensive, expensive things in the in the format are like the bigger beefier creatures and having a card like trophy that not only answers big creatures but also cleans up planeswalkers is nice um the inclusion of adventurous impulse is also interesting here this uh gives a little bit of threat density it's not quite commune with the dinos like the straight dino build of girl get to play but this build is playing phoenixes and hellkite so this is a commune with the dinos s card that adds some consistency to what we're doing while also giving us a little bit of added threat density so Let's dive on into some matches here and see how see how this one goes. Yeah, impulse impulse is what I haven't seen too many other people play, and commune with the dinos has been impressive in the in the things that I've seen. Seems fine. I think Brown is just a fine card in general. It's like reasonable against uh, red and white aggro, good against vampires. It blows up Reclamation. Seems like a fine inclusion. Now, one thing about this build is that, and maybe this is kind of what the Adventures Impulses are doing, we, we don't really have a lot of Accelerants. We only have Paradise Strid. As the only acceleration in the deck, so we're a little bit slower to get to our fours. Our our fours aren't going to come down on three as often as some of the other they do in some of the other girl builds. Throwing his mulligan to five. That being said, impulse does give us a little bit of consistency here. To grab grab that paradise Drid. Main deck healer of the glade. That's an interesting one. I mean, our opponent is also mythic. It's like lost, lost to the red deck one too many times. No box. I mean, like, I looked at this card for some of my sideboards, no joke. I was kind of thinking I don't really want to play this out into Tefri, but that's a big dumb pro blue dino right there. That is a big dumb pro blue dino. Uh, I am uncertain if Teamer Elementals is a deck that has enough consistency against the aggressive decks to have long-term staying power. That would be that would be the question I need to answer. It very obviously draws enough cards to like bury a lot of the mid-range and control decks in the format. But like, how does it do against mass manipulations and how does it keep up against the decks that are getting under it? Are the two big questions in my mind for it? I don't really know what they're doing. They played some elementals, they played a Defrey. Noxious Grasp is probably pretty good here. Um, I don't know if Lava Coil is good or not. Uh, Ceratops seems fine. I think I'm just going to do that. Extra Ceratops, extra Nostalgic Grass, Lava Coil's out. Yeah, Takatli Tuc Honor Guard is very good. Some of the some of the Elementals decks were playing Lightning Strike in the 75, which I kind of like.
pretty easy mulligan here. Just uh, just one land, no acceleration. Uh, I don't know if this is a, a great keep, but we're on the draw with this guy. Hopefully find a, uh, a piece of cheap interaction or a Paradise Drid. Having our, having our first turn turn B3, uh, play on three is probably not good enough. Would you ever main deck to Kali though? Maybe? It is, it is good against the red deck as well, which I think is uh, a meaningful note. Are they a scape shift deck? They're probably a scape shift deck, huh? Scape shift elementals. Right on time, Paradise Druid. Welcome to the party. Well, no trophy, no noxious here. Probably means we're dead. I'm not sure we're going to be able to beat this making three, three, threes. Now that look, didn't look great for us there. I'm not sure I really have much to change. Maybe Thrashing Brown on not amazing. I bring in a couple of duresses. They might have like mass manipulation too. Let's try that. Right, looking for uh, looking for one more land here. Perfect. To curve right on out. I'm known for my excellent timing. Don't worry, I got this. This this was a good draw. Because I don't have double green down here, so I can't play, I couldn't play this and attack Defri for two here. Only time will tell. You are taking the land off the impulse? Nah, our deck's got a lot of mana in it. I think being greedy there is fine. Yeah, I could have played the dragon and attacked it, and I probably do that if I have to, but I, th I think being able to activate this dragon is probably going to be worthwhile. Like, their health total is still pretty high. Like, I had a lot of shots to hit the land. The Nissa land stick around when you flood. That's so good. That's gross. Yep. I mean, what what control though? 
what what control exists that we're being that we're being bad against. So they get dealer's choice of a card to uh, put back on top of their Okay, they got a Risen Reef in there. Be good to see Tefri reset my Scrag and Hellkite. Baffling end. All right, so I guess we're not attacking with Paradise Druid then. Oh, they just declined it. Interesting. Weird that they didn't. They didn't even want a Risen Reef there. These shocks, along with our Dargan here, might allow us to pressure them out even if they find something like Scape Shift here, which is nice. So I think I just double shock this so I can Ceratops. Although that triggers field. So if they're triggering field anyways, I think I'm actually going to wait here. And just go shock plus hellkite activation. Smack you for five. If I double shock there, I could have like deployed rip draw raptor maybe. But then I'd be down the shock in my hand. If they have a blue source of manipulation us, the game's probably over. Which that's been my the tough part for these girl style decks in my experience is that like mass manipulation, you don't, you're not aggressive enough on average to get under these decks before they manipulate you. And then you just can't beat a manipulation in most of the games. Uh, Veil, Veil is technically an anti-manipulation card, but, like, the way it ends up working out in practicality, like, holding up the green is often difficult. And, like, you have to have it in exactly the window that they're casting it. These decks are very good at tapping out and spending all their mana every turn, whether it's by playing Scrag and Hellkite's abilities or using things like this. This, these style, these style of decks, like we said, these mid this mid-range archetype really just flounders in this format right now. Just because, like, you're not efficient enough to get under what people are doing, and then, like, all these other blue decks just have such great tools for going way over the top of anything you're able to put together. Yeah, Narset's fine. Like, Esper Hero had a mediocre, a mediocre weekend at the tournament, but like, once people realize how to build that deck, that things haven't really changed, I think they're gonna be more than fine. It's not it's not even good at good at control, Caboose Man. If you think about what these blue decks are doing, these blue decks are more ramp payoffs with things like mass manipulation more than a control deck than anything. So, like, ramp beats mid-range is kind of like a pretty typical Magic Theory-style thing. Like, in general, ramp decks tend to dumpster mid-range decks. Incendium. 
How many years worth of sub badges does Twitch support anyways? A lot, actually. I actually have a bunch of badges that aren't used. It goes up to like seven or eight now, I think. We have we have Hoglandia badges through 48 months, I believe. And like, generally speaking, control decks with counter spells are supposed to be the natural predator to ramp decks. But because... But because, uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Because, um, because of cards like six mana Chandra and things like three mana Tefri, this current format has kind of turned that normal what you expect roll on its head. Anyone sub since day one of the sub button? I assume there's a few. There's a couple, there's a few that are like really close. I don't think I have any quite exactly day ones. Things hex proof, right? It's just attack in the air here. Yeah, and discard discard spells are worse against ramp decks. They just like draw their next big thing off the top, basically. mock national anthem at one point i believe it's still pinned in the general channel in the subs discord server if i if i recall correctly all right well our opponent did a whole lot of nothing and then died um they're bringing Noxious Grass. They probably have things that this can kill. Lava Quail's probably not stellar against them. I guess they could They could be a Phoenix deck, right? Like, the fact that they played Vine Mare kind of muddies, like, what they could possibly be doing. I'm going to hedge Phoenix and leave the Lava Quails in, I think. I'm going to cut these. They're probably a little bit too small on average. I think the Esper Mana Base can afford to run Temple. Yeah, BBD... BBD played uh, two temples in his Esper list. You can find it in the fandom tournament from last week. This is fine. I don't really know what I'm looking for with this impulse yet. I think I'm actually just going to play a tap land on one and save myself the two life. Because what what exactly I want to get with this could change depending on my next couple of draw steps. No blocks here. Opponent's got rhythm. the no blocks here this obviously represents a removal spell when they're attacking next turn will impulse hopefully find another four drop and drop the four drop into play if we brick off on a four in the next four cards we could lava coil something phoenix phoenix plus lily on a dread horde general is a pretty sweet one too that is an excellent draw I might actually just line up a double block here. Just like try and prevent them from getting further onto the board. Woof.
feel like they don't have another red source here, so I'm just gonna block and gain three. Good, good read. All right, going to six is a little scary here, but I get to kill their board and draw two cards, so that's nice. This this feels pretty good. Not not bad, uh, JPG. If we'd had a if we'd had a buddy land there to stay at eight, I'd feel a little bit better off. It's a little six is a little little precarious there. I didn't strictly miss an attack because if they blocked with their crawl harpooner that had reach, I wouldn't have. Uh, are we dead? We're dead. That's unfortunate. Remember when I said I'd feel better if we had eight life? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Yeah, yeah, you draw when the elemental token dies during the upkeep. That was unfortunate. Yep. We did, we did, we died, we died happy. He died doing what he loved, chat. Drawing, drawing cards, never forget. Uh, yep, Corel. If there was a different one I liked more, I definitely would update the site to reflect that. Alright, so... Domri... Domri make Ripjaw Raptor fight things just like... That's so disgusting. Trigger. Gobble, gobble. Like Mr. Ripjaw Raptor, like ate two of their things and drew two cards. Hard to ask for too much more than that. Let's start with this. I'm grab Ripjaw. Uh, let's play my burb out. I guess this is worse against Lava Coil. This is a card they realistically have post board. So I could, I could trade my Domri for their Kiora. Is that worth it? Probably not. And also just like, plus play another Phoenix, hit them for five. I think I like that actually. Because this means if they don't kill my creatures or my Domri, I get to kill them with Scragon Hellkite next turn, which seems appealing. Not Lava Coiling this because it's not a legal play. This Dorko is hexproof. They just attack me? Yeah, no blocks. So you're dead? Do, 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 do. 
Yeah, Rekindling. Rekindling Phoenix is definitely a super strong card in general. Hey, Boneless. Thank you for the 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody this morning. Everyone's having a fantastic Monday and a great start to the week wherever they're at in the world. If you're a new viewer, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic and other strategy games 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. As always, love to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here doing it out without their support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me in play. I'd also like to plug a couple of my sponsors here really quick. The Vitamin String Quartet makes unique instrumental string arrangements of everything from Zelda to Zeppelin, and they would love to underscore your next gaming session. You can find them streaming now on services such as Spotify and Apple Music. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of artwork that they already have on their website, such as my own Hoaglandia branded merchandise. And of course, cool stuff, Inc.com buy and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles using promo code Jeff5. You can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, Warhammer, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Don't make your life garbage time. Join us in Hoaglandia today by subscribing to Jeff Hoagland with Twitch Prime today. How was the how was the audio level on that? I uh I made I made a scene for it. Was the audio level okay? I did, I did, I balanced it before we, it was a little, it was a little low. Okay, we'll pull it up, we'll pull it up a hair next time. Better, better low than too loud, right? December Black, thank you for re-upping. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me around. Is it GPDC in June? For some reason, I always went to Cool Stuff, Inc., Stand first. I couldn't understand why, but I think I finally figured it out. The Je ads on Jeff's streams are making their way to my subconscious. God bless. Sounds good. I'll give him. I'll put him. Put him up a hair for next time. Don't make your life garbage time. Join us in Hoaglandia today by subscribing. All right. All right. Sorry to cut. Sorry to cut the vegetable man off midway. I feel. I feel like it's appropriate that I'm eating a carrot while we're talking about that, right? Don the Mage, thank you for the 2 on 3 sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. And Mr. Silicone, thank you for the 30 months of support. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The video made me do it. God bless. That, that video is the best $10 my buddy's ever spent. I'm gonna shock this in response. My hand's pretty slow. I don't want to get accidentally run out of the gate by something like that. I think they're they were pretty unlikely to attack with us anyways. That's uh that's a big hydra. And an even bigger Nissa. just playing Phoenix and playing this tapped and probably planning to play this in down tick next turn. I don't think I want to coil the land this turn. I think I want to play one of my four drops. Hey, Nox Pox. Thanks for the very generous tier two resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I don't know if we're going to be revisiting limited stuff on the channel strictly anytime soon, but we are going to be um, the fandom folks Invited me back to play in their tournament again this week. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to be doing that on Thursday again. Is is my plan. Oh. Do not 
Uh, I would like to present Nyssa, yet another reason why all of these various mid-range decks just can't keep up. What am I playing on Thursday? Not sure. I don't have to submit a deck until... I don't have to submit a deck until Wednesday, so I've got a little bit of time. Hey, Ray Mile. Thanks for the 10 month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, if we get if we get manipulation, we get manipulation. There's not really a whole lot I can do there. This thing is trample, right? <sighs> that is a, that is a that is a unit of a hydra. That is a big a bow. That is definitely a way to describe it. Definitely a unit of a hydra. And it's like, well, I guess I board in these Veil of Summers, but like a lot of their draws, this Veil of Summers not going to do anything, right? It's like feels feels very very rock hard place playing a deck like this. I think. Uh, I think moving forward at a minimum, I'm not going to take any more mid-range decks this standard season as donation decks, at least not for the base amount. For for bigger donations, I might still do some mid-range decks because if we're getting paid extra, getting beat up, getting beat up feels a little bit less bad, but most of these, most of these mid-range decks are just like me getting pummeled for the last week or so, which is like not a great experience. So the rock deck we played had an aggressive slant to it. Like, I don't know why people, like, I I guess the fandom people labeled it mid-range, which is why people are confused, but, like, my deck with Steel Leaf Champions and three mana seven sixes is definitely not a mid-range deck. Just, just so my position is clear. And that being said, there's a number of mid-range deck. It's probably going to be... A rough next week and a half while we clear out the mid-range decks that people had submitted as the formats established, but I'm gonna be gonna be some tough ones. Nineteen basic mountains is really good. Yeah, not not finding a threat on the impulse is is not great. It basically means we kept five land shock trophy, which is like not really where we want to be. Well, I mean that's a threat next turn, right? And please the board at least. Is mono red a consideration for Thursday? No. No, I, I won't play a deck like the Team or Tears deck on Thursday. This is uh, this is a really good draw. So I get to have these fight. And then this attacks Nyssa. Does it? I guess these would trade. I don't really want to trade, huh? Yeah, I guess I don't want to trade. I'll just trophy the Nyssa. I generally speaking don't like playing decks that lose to aggro, but it's it's probably also a, a kind of a a rock and a hard place trying to find a deck that doesn't lose to aggro and also just doesn't get dumpstered by these ramp decks. We'll see how Sultai Flash goes today. 
If Zoltai Flash goes well today, I'll probably play that because that deck was fun last time we played it. And it, it plays the style of magic that I really enjoy playing. If we'd have drawn spells this game, we might have been we might have been in a position to win, but the uh, the severe lack of spells has not uh, done us any favors here. So, in general, Chef Seth, um, the reason why I'm playing in the Phantom Tournaments is because playing tournaments occasionally is fun, but they're also a free roll. And even when I was traveling around the country to play in tournaments, I didn't really play stock decks like Mono Rakes. I don't really enjoy that from a tournament experience perspective. i much rather enjoy playing things that work outside the box. So, if, if I would, I would sooner not play a tournament than play a deck that's like not particularly engaging to me in a tournament so like rather than play mono red i'd sooner just not play and like that's nothing it's not it to say anything negative about anyone personally out there who enjoys playing mono red and would play mono red in a tournament that's just the parts that of my brain that magic like is fun for me doesn't find that style of gameplay fun in a tournament setting I think it all sucked because they have a secondness anyways, Ninja Killer. It was like a build our own adventure book on how we wanted to lose the game. We could lose the game in a variety of ways. Mono Blue Tempo took second place at the SCG Open this weekend. If you're someone that's following competitive magic, you definitely want to keep an eye on the SCG tournament series. The finals was Mono Red versus Mono Blue. When do we shift from a girl hoogie to is it? Well, we're playing a girl deck, so I felt like we should be a girl hoogie. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be on theme. Savor the flavor. How many borders do I have? Yes. Is that is that an answer? Yes. Yes is the answer to your question. The black splash for Liliana hurts the curve. In what way? Can you elaborate and be specific? How do you how do you feel playing Liliana hurts the curve specifically? Because your explanation there doesn't make any sense to me. Like if you had Hellkite and Liliana, I'd rather play Hellkite to either stabilize or close the game out. Well, why do you why do you have to choose one or the other? We're playing both. I'm not I'm not sure I follow your line of thinking. Also, we're more playing black for removal, like Trophy and Noxious and other stuff like that, as opposed to be playing black cards explicitly for Liliana. Although Liliana's looking pretty good here. Rekindling Phoenix gonna punch the clock and go to work. This card's still incredibly good. Reasonable against control and aggro for sure. Red Rover, Red Rover, let vampires come over. It's Prime Day, why didn't you say anything? Because I'm only a shill for people that pay me to be a shill. Why do I want to attack? 
If I attack, I feel like I'm gonna end up in a pretty medium spot. No, I just want to make tokens here. If I minus four, they just like lose these two and have these things left over and they kill my Liliana. She, she ultimates pretty quickly. Don't mind me, just drawing three. Sorry, sorry, drawing four. All right, what if we kill your creatures and I draw another card? Got some good, good tools for the aggro matchup here. Got some good tools for the aggro matchup. I wonder if I just like trim the impulses. That doesn't seem unreasonable. Maybe Domri comes out too. I'm boarding in a lot of cheap removal and I probably have a hard time defending Domri at, at certain points. This seems fine. Hey. Fujin Blaze, thank you for the very generous sub gifties. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday wherever you're at. Be sure to take a peek at the deck queue and let me know if there's anything in there you'd like to see a little bit sooner. Whenever people uh, support my content, I always like them to pick something out in there. The Vampire's matchup seems okay. Okay on the surface. Got a lot of, got a lot of big butts and we cannot lie. Freedom! Huh? See, it might be too slow on the draw. I don't know, it's got a lot of good cards in it, but not having a shock in our opener kind of stinks. I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that Moment of Craving is better than just playing like Disfigure or more shocks. Just because while the, while the life gain from this card is nice, the amount of efficiency we gain from being able to play spells on the first turn of the game or like play double spells sooner is valuable, I think. That's a Gideon. I march into battle as your champion of justice. Your champion of justice. I will lend you my strength. Well, well, shoot. Huh? Let's do this. I think I just want the bird. I think I want the bird. Bird's better against destroyer removal. Green Black Citadel was very disappointing. I don't I don't think that deck has is anywhere near as competitive as it was in previous seasons, unfortunately. Just a lot of a lot of things that doesn't line up in too well right now. I mean Disfigure is a reprint. So Disfigure Disfigure is a card that's existed in the past. I believe in you. I believe in you. I think I'm gonna eat the Dusk Legion Zealot if they attack here with it. 
Uh, I'm gonna block here with this. If they have cast down, they can kill my bird, but then my Ripjaw Raptor is more likely to live, which is nice. So... I have five mana this turn, which is not, just not a lot of mana. I can play Domri, fight something, moment of craving something. Is that, I think that's the line. I think I'm just going to pass. If they want to cash their Gideon in to exile my Phoenix, I'm okay with that exchange, I think. I think Orzhov Aristocrat is a competitive deck. I don't know. I don't know what that deck looks like this season. I know last season I I, I preferred um, Red Black Aristocrats to Orzhov, but I'm not really sure if it got new tools this season or not. You know, them get to declare attackers here because I would like to be able to block with this Paradise Druid potentially, so maybe I can save my Domri. So, like, I might want to block and then moment something else here depending on depending on what they do. They haven't activated their Gideon yet, so they might downtick this Gideon on something post-combat. No. <laughs> But if I do this and moment the Dusk Legion Zealot... I think I like this. Definitely, Fuji. Thanks for the support. So, would you would you like to trade your Gideon for my bird? There therein lies the question. A little sad I lost my Paradise Druid because I drew a two-mana spell and can't double spell this turn now. But taking the Gideon out of play is like still a big game for us. So... I think I'm just going to Raptor... They have Noxious here. I'm a little bit sad. No Noxious means I probably win the game. We get to kill their thing and draw another card here. Oh, that's a good one. Big Mama. Big Mama's here.
Yeah, yeah. If we get to, if we get like the buddy land or the basic to Liliana next turn, we'll get to down ticket and draw a bunch. Uh, both of those things happened, Caboose Man. We actually played Citadel as the first deck today. It was not, it was not a good scene. Yeah, yeah, a deck, a deck like this that plays creatures to the board makes Liliana really good. Part of me, part of me wants to try, like, a red-black mid-range deck. I don't know, we've been saying mid-range has a hard time, so, like, maybe that's a bad idea. But, like, a, just a red-black mid-range deck with Liliana and Rekindling Phoenix could be sweet. The question, the question for a mid-range deck right now is like, how would a red-black mid-range deck be able to not die to, um, be able to not die to mass manipulation? That necessarily would be the question. Modern was kind of a dumpster fire this morning. It's been a, it's been a rough, it's been a rough Monday. That's really good. Because it lets them attack and not lose either of these inside of combat. And we take four just from these attacking. The good news is I get to draw two cards here, but... Noxious Grasp is so good. Why are you why are you so good, Noxious Grasp? That's true. In just 63 short weeks, three mana Tefru will rotate. Alright, All right, let's get another one with this one. The mid-range matchups we played so far felt pretty hopeless, but that uh, that vampire matchup felt pretty good. Felt like felt like we were on the right side of that. Ooh, foils. Should we should we open some twenty gem packs? Yay, twenty gems! Whoa! This is a meme streamer's best rip. The mythic wild card. We should get an overlay countdown for the number of weeks until Tefu rotates out. We have an overlay countdown for the number of weeks until Tefu rotates out. Keep your keep your eye on the corner of the screen. It's in there. It's in there with the rest of the advertiser banners. Now, I think it's more conservative to save the life, so the Black White Vampires deck does have things like Sorin and Othakaya to occasionally give them extra points of reach. How do I have a slideshow with an image and a browser source? I have a translucent um, image in my banner rotation, Brad. And then I have the, uh, the browser capture just positioned behind it. So that way when the translucent one comes up, it shows it through. Yeah, exactly.
based on, yeah, I'll just say, based on the variety of lands they've played so far, almost certainly a Field of Dead slash Scape Shift deck, yeah. Our, uh, our hasty Sky Monsters here might be able to give them the what's up here before they can do anything, though. Pretty, pretty good start. Yeah, Rekindling Phoenix is a super sweet and powerful card. How much longer are we jundling for? Uh, we've been going for about 50 minutes, so this match, if we win this match, we'll probably do one more. If we get if we get run out by the escape ship deck, we'll probably probably move along. This is Scape Shift is another style of deck that generally can go over the top of these mid-range decks. Having having a very aggressive draw like we did there is gonna be key to winning this matchup, most likely. I'm gonna bring in these duresses, hoping to snipe scape shifts before they happen. Unfortunately, Graph Digger's Cage doesn't stop Scape Shift from doing anything. They might, they probably have some Planeswalkers that Noxious Graph deals with. Let's go ahead and bring those in. The website that I use to calculate the odds of drawing things is just a hypergeometric distribution calculator. So, Graph Digger's Cage doesn't actually stop uh, Tamiya's Downtick or Cavalier. So, Graph Digger's Cage is in the sideboard for Experimental Frenzy and for uh, Dread Horde. Are the, the two reasons we want to play that card. Mana creature is exactly what we wanted here. Yeah, like, the problem with something like Ashiok is it's kind of narrow overall. And while I could see something like Scapeshift being fringe successful in this format, I would be kind of surprised if it became a mainstay. Three color mana bases are, in fact, rather painful. That is an accurate statement. Welcome back, Will. And we'll bleed for our mana. Hit auto resubs. Um, if you are a uh, paying subscriber, I believe the default option is to auto resub when you sign up. If you go into your subscription settings option, you should be able to control that or toggle it if you wanted to change it. As a big man of payoffs, are scape ship decks just slower than Nissa or the theft decks? Well, so to answer part of your statement there, it scape shift and Nissa aren't an either or question, right? So, like, for instance, if you look at the mono green scape shift deck that you'll find on my website, it is both, it is both a uh, Nissa and scape shift deck. So, you can just do both at the same time. <laughs> green, green haste is great. All right, well, they did, they did a whole lot of nothing, nothing and just got ran O-V-E-R. Seems, seems good. Yeah, opponent, opponent was playing like non-creature based ramp. It didn't have anything like Nissa going on. All right, let's try. Let's try one more here before we uh, before we slide along to some soul time.
Lightning Elemental is the the ball lightning blightning, right? It might be okay. I don't know. There's a lot of creatures that block in modern. I guess it generally gets some damage through. Like, how often is that card going to be meaningfully better than Blightning, I guess, is the question. Although, I suppose in Traverse Shadow, you can search it up, which is nice. Any Dex candidates for Deck of the Day so far? It's been a little bit of a rough going so far, IRL. And that's okay, though. I'm planning to do a little bit longer stream today. I'm hoping... I really want to get through Green White Bow, so we're probably going to run a little bit late. Because uh, Green White Bow is one of the decks I could consider playing for Thursday. I really liked that deck last time we played it. Um, I already have a four. This is really good against other girl decks, though. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, shadow variations are probably fine submissions. I usually don't mind. I usually like playing the more aggressive things in modern. Lightning Skelemento would be sick inside of Aristocrats. That card would be gas and standard. Hey, Kath, thanks for re-upping that Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine again this month with that. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Naya, Naya Dinos is interesting. I think I'm just going to go ahead and kill this treasure map. I mean, Arena doesn't let you rebind any of the keys right now. Again, Arena is beta software because it's pretty feature incomplete. It's just the, the reality of what it is. And we're slowly, slowly adding stuff. So, I would like to make one thing abundantly clear in my chat. For people who are newer and haven't been here the last time this topic came up. You cannot accidentally cheat in competitive paper Magic the Gathering. In order for someone to have cheated in competitive paper Magic the Gathering, they are required to have knowingly broken the rules and to done so to gain an advantage in their match. When you see someone take an illegal game action on stream, that player is not automatically cheating. Magic is a game that has a lot going on at the same time, and players frequently miss things and make mistakes that are both beneficial and detrimental to them. Things that both they miss and their opponents miss. Another thing that always comes up from the under-informed who like to have opinions on things that they don't understand is that the table judge in a match of coverage is not there to make sure the rules are followed. The table judge is there to record life totals. Something you frequently hear from people is like, but Jeff, why didn't the table judge catch it? The table judge knows how magic works. Well, it's not the table judge's job to follow every little detail about the game. Their job is to make sure the overlay stays updated. And again, in a perfect world, these things wouldn't happen. But we don't live in a perfect world and humans are certainly one of the least perfect parts of it. So don't assume malice where ignorance or sloppiness is adequately explains what's going on. So I'm actually taking this week off from Underlords because um, I had a lot of Magic deck submissions and I'm a little I'm a little stale on on their their format. They're supposed to be putting out a balance patch on Thursday. I did I cut Bronson on here because while they have treasure maps, um, 
it's probably not going to line up well into like what the size of my opponent's creatures if they're playing a bunch of dinosaurs. As for doing Underlords at the end of the stream, unfortunately, um, the end of stream time as a streamer is more valuable than the beginning, than the beginning of stream time, just because um, the way viewer counts work, you kind of snowball viewers as you go later into the day. And it's tough for me to run too much past my normal end time too often, just because of like, you know, kids and family and other commitments. Another another metric I was looking at, I talked about this earlier when we were doing modern stuff, is that when I'm looking back on my uh, Twitch API metrics, um, when I'm streaming Underlords, I actually lose Twitch followers, which is not ideal. I guess it's not too unexpected to that would happen when I would stream the game Hex TCG with alongside Magic interchangeably. There's a lot of people, a lot of people who don't want to see people in there, in their section who are playing games that, uh, that they don't care about. They have to weigh out the downside of losing followers with some consistency against streaming another game. I'm just going to play my bird here. That's the most common reason I release a follow. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you're alone. <laughs> they don't have a lava coil here. This is like pretty reasonable. Let's them trample over for one more point of damage, but I think I'm okay trading my bird for like their Ceratops plus a removal spell here. Especially with two more threats in my hand. Lotus Field and Aristocrat. That sounds a little bit too slow and clunky overall. Like the Aristocrat deck is often starved on mana a little bit. And like having a, a two lander that's like Lotus Field and another land that you can't keep feels awkward. Rekindling Phoenix is so good in these red-green mirrors. And like having having black removal is really good in these red-green mirrors too. Mirrors. Well, I mean, they're just dead in two, right? Afternoon, Jace. Yeah, yeah, the green black stompy deck's a lot of fun. Have I mentioned how much I love Assassin's Trophy? Have I mentioned have I mentioned how good removal is? Having having real removal. It's more than good. It's great. Watch them just have like seconds of comma here. I was joking! That wasn't supposed to actually happen. You were supposed to die on my untap opponent. That's not how this is supposed to work. <laughs> oh, I've been away from home on seven month contracts so a job may be hard but having friendly inspiring videos to check out all the time makes it better from the home away thanks for everything thanks for keeping me around symbol are we dead I feel like we may have died this thing has reach too right yikes I guess, I guess I'm only taking seven and then I can untap and draw another removal spell. So we're gonna kill, kill one of the Phoenixes here, I assume. 
We'll give it, give it a double tap. We could rip a second trophy. We also have our, our third trophy or one of our Noxiouses. Really? We're just gaining a bunch. That's an interesting line. Um, If they attack with this, I'm actually going to throw this away to gain five and draw an extra card towards killing the Zakama. Because they, if they untap with this, we're not going to get... We're not going to be able to do... Lucky, lucky, lucky! Magic's a skill game. Better player always wins, etc., etc. Don't, don't you, don't you put that mojo on me, December Black. I don't need a third Zakaba in my life. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. Whew. Whew. All right. Well, um, yeah. This, this really feels like the style of deck that... How good it ends up being in the format is definitely going to largely depend on... Oh, God, why is this flashing? It's going to largely depend on which decks end up being at the top of the field. This deck felt like it was very reasonable against the other Grohl decks. It felt good against uh, Vampires, but it felt really mediocre against the big blue ramp decks. And I'm, I'm honestly not sure what you could really do to make that that much better. I think, I think your best bet in those matchups is just like to hope to punk them out on occasion. Um, something that might be worth doing in those matchups is that this build is playing fewer accelerants. And while I think it would make your aggro matchup a little bit worse, something that I would want to try is just like having more ramp in my deck. I think going up to a fourth Hellkite too, so you have more games where you get to race people down is probably decent. So I think I would probably do something... Impulses were actually pretty good. I think I would probably try something like this to start and see how it feels. Um, see if like maybe having more Hellkites and occasionally getting turn three Hellkites um, is something that can make those those blue blue matchups better, especially in conjunction with Veil of Summer. Having having more acceleration makes your Veil of Summer more likely to be able to hold up as well. Um, one other thought on the sideboard is that I'm not sure if these Moment of Cravings are actually better than just like playing Shock and Disfigure. Probably, probably playing Shock. We've got plenty of red mana. So I think, I think that's something I'd consider is like just replacing these with Shock for the sake of resource efficiency because frequently Shocking for one mana is going to save you two points of life. So while like Moment of Craving is a little bit better in the mid to late game off the top of your deck because you want to gain life, in the early games, the efficiency on Shock is a lot more powerful. All right, we're going to slide along to some Sultai Flash here. When we played a little bit at the end of last week, that seems sweet. I'm excited to dive back into it. Get the stream decker updated. <laughs> 